Unless you live under a rock, you have probably heard of the experimental COVID-19 vaccine. And it doesn't matter if you're pro-vaccine or anti-vaccine, you need to educate yourself on whether or not getting this vaccine is the right choice for you and your loved ones. Today, we'll be going over the number of deaths that have been reported to the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, or VAERS, since it was given emergency use approval in December of 2020, and just what that information means. Good morning, health-minded people. I'm Dr. Snow, and I teach you to be in charge of your own health because other than God, no one cares about your health as much as you should. After it was granted emergency use approval in the United States, the first dose of the experimental COVID-19 vaccine was given on December the 14th of 2020. So as of January the 30th of 2021, we have 47 days of information on its use in the general public. So what does emergency use approval mean? Per the FDA website, which I will leave a link to below, an emergency use authorization, or EUA, is a mechanism to facilitate the availability and use of medical countermeasures, including vaccines, during public health emergencies, such as the current COVID-19 pandemic. Under an EUA, the FDA may allow the use of unapproved medical products or unapproved uses of approved medical products in an emergency to diagnose, treat, or prevent serious or life-threatening diseases or conditions when certain statutory criteria have been met, including that there is no adequate, approved, and available alternative. Taking into consideration input from the FDA, manufacturers decide whether and when to submit an EUA request to the FDA. As of January the 30th, 2021, there are two products that have been granted emergency use authorization, one from Pfizer-BioNTech and one from Moderna. Both of these products require two injections. The Pfizer-BioNTech product is given one injection now and the second in 21 days, while the Moderna product is given one injection now and the second in at least 28 days. Johnson & Johnson is also working on a form of the vaccine that will require only one injection, but this product hasn't been granted emergency use approval as of today. Both vaccines that do have EUA have so far shown over 90% effectiveness in preventing recipients from getting COVID-19. How long this protection lasts remains to be seen because there hasn't been enough time to test it. The VAERS reporting system is part of the Health and Human Services Division of the United States government. VAERS, or the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, was established in 1990 to provide a way of collecting data on possible safety problems in the United States vaccines. While anyone may report an adverse event to VAERS, Healthcare professionals are required to report certain events and vaccine manufacturers are required to report all events that are brought to their attention. I will leave a link in the description below on how to access the VAERS website. As of January the 30th, 2021, there have been 283 post-vaccine deaths reported to VAERS. And we know from the CDC that as of January the 30th, 2021, there have been 25,615,268 cases of COVID-19 in the United States with 431,619 deaths for a mortality rate of 1.68% for all ages combined. This means that 98.3% of all the cases in the United States have survived. I have friends that have fallen into the 1.68% category, and I'm sure that you have also, and I am very sorry for your loss. But most people will survive this new disease, often with mild or no symptoms. The elderly have a higher mortality rate and account for 49.8% of all deaths so far. So it would stand to reason that giving the vaccine to the elderly would be a good choice, right? But look at who falls into the highest incidence of death after the vaccine category, the elderly. 210 of the 283 or 74.2% of reported deaths were people over the age of 65. So is it the best choice for those over the age of 65 to get the vaccine? 
bear in mind that just because someone died after receiving the experimental vaccine does not mean that the vaccine caused the death, just that it occurred. I am not presenting this to tell you what to do one way or the other. I am giving you the information so that you can make your own decision. But to put things in perspective, in the same time frame, December of 2020 through January the 30th of 2021, deaths from all other vaccines reported to VAERS total 55 from 20 different vaccines. There were a total of 337 deaths reported after administration of some vaccine, and 283 of these deaths were after the experimental vaccine, or 83.98%. It's something to think about before you decide to get the experimental vaccine. I will leave a link to the CDC website in the description below so that you can look at their numbers and you can educate yourself on whether or not you, your elderly parent or your elderly grandparent should be getting the vaccine now or should you wait until we have more information on this experimental vaccine. If you have found this information helpful, but want more information on the experimental COVID-19 vaccine, click and watch this video now. Thank you for joining me today to learn whether or not the experimental COVID-19 vaccine is right for you. Stay healthy, take control of your own health, and have a blessed week.